Hello ladies and gentlemen, Mike here at Game From Scratch and welcome to Bowling with the Godot Game Engine. Now this is part of an ongoing series in which we're going to implement a very simple 3D bowling game using various different game engines. And today we are going to use the popular open source Godot Game Engine. Now we're working with Godot 2.x, um, so the 3.0 release is not quite out yet, so we're going with the basically the version you can use today. Now I've already done one of these for uh, the Unity Game Engine and the Play Canvas game engine. So a very similar game is being implemented in all three game engines. So if you want to compare and contrast the workflow, or if you just want to learn how to get started in any one of those particular game engines, hopefully this series is right for you. Now, as I mentioned, today we are looking at Godot. And um, quick note to patron backers. First off, thank you. Uh, second off, there is a PDF version of this, 28 pages, I think it is, step by step. It goes through everything we are about to go through right now. In addition, all of the assets we are about to use today are also available on the Patreon Dropbox. So once again, thank you for your support. Um, to everybody else, the... Um, I don't know what just happened there. The um, uh, web-based version of this will be online very soon, uh, either tomorrow or on Monday. Uh, and I will link that down in the comments down below once that is published. All right, so without further ado, let's jump right in and create our game. Um, obviously, you need to have Godot installed. I'm not going to go into a lot of detail on each step. I'm going to assume you already know about Godot. And if you don't, I've got a full tutorial series that will get you up and going. Um, so this is more just to illustrate what the process is like. Go ahead, create my new project. Like so, call it inventingly enough bowling, and let's create it. And give um, Godot a second here to load up. All right. So now that we've got our scene, what I want to do is we're going to start off with the uh, title screen first. And so we're going to have two scenes in this project. A title screen uh, that has a looping soundtrack, which is awful. And then when you, um, I think, click or press any key, we move on to the main game itself. So first we're going to create the title screen. Uh, so first off, let's create uh, a root node. Uh, I'll call it... Uh, it's, it's a node. Let's create it. So this is just the root of our scene graph. You can rename it or not. It doesn't really matter. Uh, so all of our entities within the scene graph are going to be childs of that particular node. So now that once we've created that, let's go ahead and create our scene, save our scene here. And uh, call it title scene. Obviously the name is up to you. I do need focus though. Come on. Title scene.tscn. All right, so we now have our initial scene, and in order to run it, we'll do a quick run here, and it'll allow us to just select the scene that we want as our default starting scene. Okay, we're up and good to go. Uh, there is our game so far. Uh, not particularly exciting. Let's add some stuff to it. Now, first off, we're going to need our texture. Now, again, if you're a Dropbox, drop, uh, sorry, a patron backer, all of the files that we're dealing with here are in the Dropbox. Otherwise, it's pretty simple assets. You can create your own fairly easily. Uh, but what we're going to do is bring in our title screen PNG. This is just a texture file that we're going to basically display. Uh, this scene is 2D. Let's switch over to the 2D tab here. And we're going to go ahead and import it. You could also just drag and drop. You could come in down here, um, show in folder and just drop the files directly in using your find, either the Finder or Windows Explorer or whatever your file system is. You can drop the files that you don't have to use this process. But what we're going to do here is import it as a texture. Uh, locate said file. Uh, so in this particular case, it is on drive D. Dropbox, patron, game kits, bowling. And what we want is title screen. So title screen.png. Where are we going to put it? I'm going to organize. I'm going to be completely unorganized with everything I'm doing here and just dropping everything in um, the, the root folder of our project. So everything, I'm not using any folders. There's no real organization going on here. All right, so that done, we'll go ahead and click import. It will bring our texture in. So there you go. We now have a .txe file uh, that aliases our texture underneath. Now let's go ahead and display it. So we're going to add a child node to our root node. It is a texture frame that we want, like so. Uh, we'll go ahead and create that guy. What I want to do is set expand on and now what we need to do is set up our texture. So just go ahead here, pick load and then select our newly created texture. And the final thing we want to do is just expand this guy out. This is what that expand toggle did so that it fills up our whole screen. So there is our title screen. Uh, pretty simple so far. Now we want to go ahead and add that looping soundtrack I talked about. And we're going to need something to play that looping soundtrack. Uh, yeah, okay, so first things first. Uh, let's go ahead and bring the sound file in. This is just a WAV file, uh, authored to just about any music tool or um, audio tool out there. So audio sample, and once again, let's bring it in. Really wish favorites saved this. So once again, Dropbox, Patron, Game Kits, Bowling, Audio, and Bowling, Bowling, oh yeah. 
And then once again, just dropping it in the root. Your defaults are fine, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to loop this guy. So we're going to just play it over and over and over again until you go absolutely insane. So import that guy in. Uh, we're good to go. Now we need to add an actual audio player so we can go ahead and play that. So we go down here, go add a child node to our texture frame. Uh, we want a sample player uh, like so, this guy right here, and create it. Now you'll see there's a little exclamation mark here because it needs a sample library. So just go on down here where it says samples, like so, and we'll create a new library. And then when I go ahead and edit this guy after creating it, you'll see it brings up this new dialog here. We'll add a sample to it and add our newest created sample. So you can preview it right here. Bowling, bowling. Bowling, bowling. Bowling, bowling. So that is our really annoying soundtrack. Obviously you can use whatever music you want, but that was a quickie dirty thing that I created. Now that we've got that, uh, what we could do is tell it to automatically play. Now there's a problem with this is that it's gonna start playing in the editor. I think this is fixed in Godot 3, but it gets really annoying really fast. So if I go back to my sample player and just set it to play that guy, the entire time we're editing, this guy will be playing over and over and over until you want to smash your face off a wall. Um, so let's not do that. What we're going to do instead is add some script here so that that'll play when we uh, load our, our scene up. So without further ado, let's attach a script here. So I'm going to go back to my texture frame up here again. Uh, we're going to right click that guy and say attach script. We're going to create it as a GD script. There's going to be more options here in the future. Uh, this is where C sharp is going to be in, again, the future. Uh, but it's not here yet. So we're going to go ahead, come down here, and we're going to call this guy title screen.gd, like so. So we just created a brand new script. Go ahead and create that. You'll see it automatically comes up in the editor for us right here. <clears throat> and now we're going to do the world's simplest uh, application. Basically, in our ready function, uh, Set process input equals true, like so. Actually, I'm not even sure why I put that line in there. Never mind. Get node sample player. So basically, get our child sample player node. And then we're going to call its play method. And we're going to play the sample bowling. Oh, yeah. Like so. And that name, of course, comes from. Here. All right, so that is the extent of our script. So now when we go ahead and run our code, instead of looping it constantly, now it'll wait till the scene is loaded bowling, and then start playing our bowling, bowling, bowling oh yeah, bowling, over and over again. Bowling. All right, so now we're basically done with our title screen. We just need to be able to actually get away from it, which is kind of cool. Now, first off, we're gonna need somewhere to go. We're gonna need another scene uh, in which, you know, the game is actually gonna play. So next thing we're gonna come up here, scene, and we'll create a new scene. And uh, once again, add a root node. So just node, I shall dub the root and save. So let's save our scene. Uh, so let's save our scene as, and I think I called it, I wanna be consistent with my documentation. Yeah, I called it game scene. That's a good name. All right. All right, so we have our new scene created. Um, you can see you can toggle between them up here. So our title screen, now what we want to do is transition to a game scene when the user um, does something. Uh, so that is why I had that set process input equals true. I will add that back now. Okay. Set process, oops, input true. All right, so this basically tells Godot that we are going to actually handle input in this guy. The next thing, let's implement the function for actually, this is the callback when input occurs and it is passed in event function. And we're gonna check if the event.type equals input event.key or event.type equal input event.mouse button. All right, so in the case of a mouse button press or any key being hit, what we're going to do is change the scene. So in order to do that, get the root of your scene, change underscore scene, and we pass in the name of the new scene. Full name, full file name with extension. So game scene like that. So basically we're saying change to uh, this guy as soon as any key is pressed or mouse is pressed. So let's check out, make sure this is working before we move on. Bowling, bowling. So there, click, and there we're now in our new scene. So it's time to get to the bulk, the heart of our game. So we got a title scene down, we change scenes now, let's actually create our game. So we're done with title scene, game scene right here. 
Uh, we're gonna make this guy instead in 3D mode. And next up, we need to bring in all of our assets. Actually, I'll do this one piece at a time. So we're gonna bring in first the bowling lane and et cetera, et cetera. Uh, so these are basically just um, blend files I created in Blender and then exported as uh, Colada or DAE files using the better Colada exporters. Now, sometimes textures don't come across and in the text version, I covered how to manually recreate your textures if this occurs. In this video, I'm just gonna hope that everything works fine. I won't show you that process. So if you need more information, if your textures don't work out, check out the web version. I will have more detail there. All right, so first thing we need to do is bring in that asset. Like I said, it is a DAE file and you actually import it as a scene. So bring in a scene, load the scene. Let's go find it. D, guess where? Dropbox, patron, game kits, bowling. All right, this one's poorly named, FBX. Also DAEs are here. So what we wanna do is bring in the bowling lane.dae and once again, pick our root directory. Uh, there are no animations, so let's just turn that off. Uh, everything else should be pretty much fine. Um, one option we can do is say no MIP maps. Um, MIP maps are basically LOD versions of the texture that are created. Uh, another thing you might want to do is turn off filtering because it creates somewhat weird results. It's up to you if you do that or not. Um, I like to. And let's go ahead, import and open. So there you go. There is our bowling lane. Pretty cool. It actually has a normal map and a diffuse map attached, as you can see. And it came in absolutely no problem at all. And again, if your texture didn't come in fine, if it doesn't look as good like this for you as it does for me, uh, do be sure to check out uh, the text version. It will probably show you the workaround you need. Uh, so without further ado, now let's set this guy up. So we got our bowling lane up here, bowling lane. What we need to do is set up some um, physics on it. Uh, so this is actually going to be a, um, uh, a static body. Uh, so it's gonna be part of our physics simulation. Grab the bowling lane mesh, go ahead and add. Uh, we want to go static body, like so. This means it will be part of the physics simulation, but it won't move. Uh, so things can hit it, but it can't hit things essentially. Uh, so now that you've created the static body, you need to go ahead and add a da -da -da -da, shape. So add a child node to it. And what you want is a collision shape. So it basically is defining to the physics engine what this thing looks like in the world at large. And then once you've got that, you actually need to create the shape. So go down here to shape, and we're going to create a box. So you see your box right there. Uh, what we can do is basically use these red dots to roughly size it. Now what you might find useful is to actually turn off perspective and go into orthogonal view instead. And let's switch to top first. All right, so let's drag this guy over this way. So you wanna be as accurate as possible, otherwise your physics simulation is gonna make absolutely no sense. And now let's switch to the front view and make this guy really small. Now what it might actually make sense to do is to come in here and actually edit your shape and grab your extents just for the Y axis, the up and down, and make that guy really small. Uh, we'll go with 0 0.1. That way, actually we can probably even go smaller, 0 0.05. That way it's thinner than you can get with manually manipulating the options. Uh, and the I think that's it for the bowling lane. So basically we have our physics defined. We can now interact with this guy. Um, we'll be creating one of these in the scene, but we'll get back to that. Next up, we need to bring our bowling pin in. So let's save our bowling lane scene, go back to our game scene. And once again, import, and we are bringing in a scene again. Now, one thing to remember when you're exporting your scenes out of Blender or whatever, the scene will contain everything, animations, uh, cameras, lights, etc. So you might wanna make sure that you select object only when you're bringing in objects like this or selected only. Uh, so without further ado, let's go ahead and grab our other guy. What we wanna do now is bring in our bowling pin. Uh, we will put this at the root of our project like so. I am cool with the same settings I used for the last time. And import and open. And ta-da, there we have a bowling pin, very cool. And now we need to go ahead and set up the physics on this guy. And this guy's gonna actually be a rigid body. Uh, it works a little bit different. It basically means it's gonna be part of this physics simulation. It can be responded to. In other words, we can hit it. Um, and the uh, hierarchy of the, the org is gonna be a little bit different too. So what we're gonna actually do is make our pin mesh here an instance of our, or a child of our rigid body. So first let's come here, create a new. What we wanna do is create a rigid body like him and then we're gonna child it like that. So back to our rigid body, uh, what do we need to do? First we need to rename this guy because we're gonna use it in code later. Rigid body. 
And yep, now uh, I'm pretty good with actually the defaults. Mass, we want it to be uh, one. Um, weight, we want it to be 9.8, yeah, sure. Um, so basically we're gonna stick with the default settings here. It doesn't really matter what settings you use, just make them relative. So when we bring in our bowling ball later, we'll make sure that it weighs more than our pins so that they interact correctly. We don't want our bowling ball bouncing off our pins. Uh, one thing you might want to turn off is sleeping. Um, that way, it, you really, it shouldn't matter in this particular game, but it'll cause the physics objects to never leave the, the physics simulation if it gets to a certain distance away or however you want to look at that. And uh, yeah, that's about it for those settings. Now what we need to do, again, is create a collision shape. Uh, so add a new instance here. This is a child of our rigid body, like so. It is a physics shape, once again. Uh, we are going to go ahead and create a box and we are going to, let's go back to our, pretty much just encompass our pin. Ah. More or less good. You were a little high on the top. We can actually move it down a little bit, but the truth is in this simulation, you're never gonna hit the top of the pin. So that fidelity really doesn't matter. I do want the bottom to be accurate though. There we go. All right, so we defined our physics shape. Um, we're pretty good to go. One thing I'm gonna do is go back here and turn on contact monitor. So this thing will actually listen for collisions with other uh, entities in the scene. So it can be handled from a code perspective. It's more important actually when we deal with the ball later on. And uh, I think our pin is done. So let's go ahead and save that guy. We will go back to our game scene and time to start assembling a game. So first off, what we need to do is create a bowling lane. Uh, so bowling lane dot scene right here. And we just right click it and create an instance. Ta-da. All right, so we're getting there. We got a bowling scene. Now one thing you may find, um, and I find this, my normal map's going a little excessive on this guy. Uh, so let's go on back into it. Uh, select the mesh. It's a bit of a drill down. So you select the mesh, you edit it, select the material, you edit it, and then what we want to do is locate, is it normal depth? I think it's normal depth. Basically, this is the amount that the normal applies, like so, and we will set it down to like 0.4. So you see then the normal map isn't doing quite as extreme of a, a job on it, and things look a little bit cleaner. Uh, so that's basically the strength that the normal map is being applied to this actual mesh. There, so you see your text got a little cleaner. The text shouldn't actually be part of the normal map. It's mostly my fault. I made kind of a crap normal map, if I'm honest. So that little segue aside, we should be done with the pin scene. We should be done with the alley scene. We've created our alley. You'll notice as I made those changes, they automatically applied to the instances, which is very cool. So now what we got to do is create some pins. So again, select the root. And this is important, otherwise you'll end up making the pins child to the lane, which you do not want. So now let's go ahead, same process, find bowling pin over here, right click it and create an instance. And there is our pin, like so. Let's drag him down the aisle a little bit, move him up, press F to zoom in on him, or frame I guess would be the technical term. Just wanna make sure that you're actually above the lane, like so. All right, looking pretty good. Actually, let's test things out. So the next thing we're gonna need is a camera. <clears throat> so if I go ahead and I run this guy now, bowling. our scene is still blank. And that's because we do not have a camera as of yet. So let's go ahead and create a camera. So once again, back to the root, create a new node, camera. You wanna create the one under spatial, make sure you don't use the 2D one, obviously. So create a camera in our scene. By default, it will be, if there's only one, it will be used. Uh, do I need to do anything settings for it? Not really. All right, so there's our camera. The cool thing with the camera is you can actually click this preview button and see what it sees. So as you see, we're below the lane. Now we're above the lane. And we just wanna roughly position our camera, you know, back here-ish, up here-ish, and rotate down a little bit. Ah, that's good, actually. That was pretty much perfect placement. Uh, let's actually make it a little bit higher so the ball doesn't get in the way. And then a little bit back. All right, perfect, so there is our bowling alley and our um, our pin here. Go ahead and we can preview that now. Bowling. Ooh, 
And that's not right. Well, we're getting to a little bit of an issue here. Once the actual game starts, uh, we need lighting. And so there's two approaches we can take to this. We can either manually create lights by adding them into the, the scene, uh, just like you would do any other. But what I'm going to do instead here is do ambient lighting. Uh, so basically environmental lighting with our camera, come down here, there's a setting for environment. Go ahead and just create a new environment and then edit it. And what we can do here is turn ambient light to on and we can pick our color for it and we're gonna do mostly white, like so. That's about it there. You can obviously control the strength of it. And there's a lot of other things you can control here in the, uh, um, the lighting settings for your environment, your HDR exposure, your background, um, etc. But in this case, we just want that lighting and that's it. Now I do find using ambient lighting results in something kind of bad. And I'll show you the end result and you can decide what you wanna do about this. So go ahead and play this. And there you see, now we have a lit scene everything looks good. If your results end up look bad, what you can do is come in and turn baked lighting off for the actual mesh. So go back to our um, bowling lane, for example, baked lighting. All right, so we come down here. Is it in here or is it in the material? Yeah, you can turn use baked lighting off and you'll get a completely different rendering result. So depending on how it looks for you, uh, that may be an approach you want to take. But for now, we're looking pretty good. Our setup is pretty solid. Our pin is way too far forward. And now you need to make the decision. Are you a 10 pin guy or are you a five pin guy? Myself, five pin, especially because it's less work. So now what we need to do is create five pins. And this is really easy. We just basically select our bowling pin like so, and we duplicate it, drag it out. Like so, let's move it over a little bit. And we will grab him and we will duplicate and we will go in the opposite direction. And then we will grab him and we will duplicate and we will go back and over. And one more time and duplicate and over and ta-da, we have a five pin bowling game. Now you could obviously use the translation here and get the positions much more uh, accurate relative to each other, but I am totally cool with my a rough version right here. Now I do seem to be a little high for some reason. Let's see what I've actually done here. Uh, let's go left view. Yeah, I am definitely a little high. So let's grab all of our pins. I don't know what I did there. I just screwed with the physics. All right, go ahead and play that. Bowling. Bowling. And there, we have our pins, we have our world, we should be good to go. Yeah, actually, let me bring that up, make sure my physics is working right. Bowling. Yep, all right, so you see our pins drop there, so the physics engine is working and happy. But let's bring them back to the ground, like so. All right, good, so we have our pins, we have our lane, we have our physics, we have our lighting, we have our camera, we have almost everything we need except for the bowling ball. Now the ball is gonna actually be the heart of the game. It's basically your player. So this is where I'm gonna put the actual game logic as well. And here's one of the areas where this tutorial veers off from the way I did it in Unity and Play Canvas. Because both of those had built-in geometrics. And in um, Godot, in three it's there, and in 2.x, it's an add-on, and I didn't want to get into add-on, so instead I just imported the bowling ball as a um, mesh instead of creating a sphere in the engine. Um, so it's possible to do it the other way, but it does make this thing a little too convoluted. So I went ahead and just created it as another scene. Speaking of which, let's go ahead and grab it. Oh, I bet you can guess where I'm gonna get it from. Drive D, Dropbox, Patron, Game Kit, Bowling, FBX, Oops. Oh, I do. I did it wrong. Uh, I picked the wrong option. Import scene. I must have hit mesh. My bad. So I had to navigate. All right. So what we want now is bowling ball. Again, no animations. And uh, we're good to go with the defaults. So let's go ahead and bring that. Um, actually, I didn't save my scene. All right. Let me make sure I save my scene because our, our pins are going to be floating back in space. And one more time. Uh, should already be set to bowling ball. Bring it into the root, import and open. Now, once again, you could do all of this with, um, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Uh, organization. <laughs> I just didn't bother in this particular example. So there is our textured bowling ball like so. Uh, pretty sweet, we're looking good. Um, now what we need to do is set this guy up. Uh, this process should start getting pretty consistent by now. What I wanna do is go ahead and create a rigid body for it. So 
make our bowling ball a child of that rigid body, go back into said rigid body. Now what we want to do is increase the mass because this guy should be heavier than the pins, which I'm good with. Uh, so now our uh, rigid body is uh, three times strong or three times heavier than our pins, which should work out about what we want. Um, now, obviously we do not want to use a um, box on our bowling ball. It's not gonna roll that well. So instead what we want to do is change it to a collision shape, new collision shape sphere. There, and now you'll notice it's a little big. Uh, so we just wanna come into that collision sphere, edit it, and we'll just drop the radius down. I think about 0.7 works out about right. Nope, too big. 0.6, yeah, that'll work. All right, so there you see our physics shape roughly covers over our object. Eh, we can make it a little bit more accurate. There, like a glove. Perfect, so there is our bowling ball imported. Physics should be set up relatively right. What we wanna do both back to our rigid body though, and we wanna turn this guy on for sure. It's a contact bonder, and let's say it can hit up to six things. This is gonna be important in our code in one second. So be sure to turn that on, or the event we're about to hook up is not going to fire properly. And um, yeah, where are we at now? Okay, so we have a bowling ball. Let's go back to our scene for a second. All right, so save that. Head back to our scene. So let's go ahead and create an instance of our newly created bowling ball. So, all right, that should be good. Our bowling ball is now in the world and ready to be thrown. Now we have to give it the ability to actually uh, collide with things and to throw it. So this involves us creating some code. So now we need to actually attach some code to our bowling ball. So come up here, bowling ball, right click it, attach a script, just like we did back in the title screen. Uh, bowlingball.gd is a great name. Go ahead and create that, like so. So next up, we wanna go ahead and actually add it so that when it collides with something, it will play some audio. And we need an audio player for that. So let's do that next. We're gonna come up here, again, same process, sample player, like this guy. Our sample player will need a sample library. So a new sample library and edit like so. And unfortunately, we need our sample. So let's go ahead and grab it. And it is hit dot wave. Uh, this one does not loop. Go ahead and import it. So come down here, we will add it to our collection and you can preview it. That's the sound it's gonna make when our ball hits a pin. So we now have a sample player. The sample has uh, a sample to go ahead and play and we have access to it and we have a script attached. So we're, we're sitting pretty here. Uh, now let's go ahead and actually make it so that when we collide with something, um, it plays that sound if what we collide it with is a pin. So let's go back over to uh, rigid body and go to node and see all the various different um, signals it can hit. The big one we want is on body enter. And we're just gonna wire that up into our bowling ball script. So you can see it created that function for us. This is script that is going to be called when there is a collision in the physics system. And all we wanna do Get the name of the body we collided with. This is why we renamed our bowling pin rigid body, or actually let's rename this guy as well. Bowling ball rigid body, just for consistency. All right, back to our script. Ah, simple if, if name equals, oh, what I actually call it, uh, where's my pin? Pin rigid body. All right, so let's go back to our code, pin rigid body body, then self dot get underscore node sample player play hit. Oh, doesn't like something. All right, we're good now. All right, so basically if we collide with something and the thing that we collided with is named rigid body, pin rigid body, go ahead and play that sound effect. So we got our script down, pretty simple. Uh, next up, what we're going to want to do is add some input to this guy. So basically, you move left, we're going to apply a little bit of physics to the left side, move right, add a little impulse to the right side, and then space bar to throw the ball. Now let's go ahead and do that. Now first things we got to do is actually set those up. So you come up to your scene here, and you go to project settings, and you can create an input map up here. There's a bunch of defaults, blah, 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 for UI controls, but we actually just want to create our own. So we're going to create one called left, 
click add here and you see it created down here at the bottom we'll add all of ours first and then we'll go back and define them right and space all right so what you could do here then you can map multiple inputs to one single identifier so you could have left be uh, the a key in the left arrow and moving the left mouse button or pressing the left mouse button for example in this case i will just do the left oops I don't know why I'm getting an F16 down, something to do with my setup being weird. So there's the left key, the right key, and they, I think it's the, um, I think it's the video capture uh, software running in the background screwing with my keyboard. So uh, basically you just define each key you wanna hit. And again, you can have multiple definitions per uh, tag, uh, but we're just gonna have those three for now. And so we now have our input map set up. We can go ahead and handle it. So in our code here, let's change our ready for process here to have set process input equals true. This means that every frame, our input function is going to be called. And speaking of which, let's create it. So this is the function that's called when input occurs. And it's a series of if dot is action released left. So if you press the left button, we want to go ahead and self.get underscore node. We're getting our child node of type, uh, save the pin, ball, bowling ball rigid body. So bowling ball rigid body, like so, dot. I don't know why I'm not getting IntelliSense. Something's gone wrong. bowlingball.rigidbody.apply underscore impulse. Uh, where to apply the impulse is just zero, zero, zero. And then the direction of impulse, and we wanna go minus one on the x-axis, like so. Now we're gonna do cut and paste coding. Right side. And I'll give you a 50-50 chance I have that screwed up and we'll be coming back to edit those signs. But anyways, if we go, if we press left, do a little impulse to the left, if we press right, do a little impulse to the right, this will move our ball left and right. And then finally, we want the ability to actually throw our ball. So if event dot is action, ah, you know what, I can do this with cut and paste too. Space, splace, Base, and instead of these, we are going to actually throw the ball um, into the screen. Is negative on the y axis or on the z axis in this case, and we'll give it about a 35. You can play with that number um, basically to your heart's content, or you can make it a property and actually um, control it uh, that way. So we're good to go. In theory, our game is pretty much a game now. Let's see how it's working. Bowling, title bowling. screen, click your title screen to go bowling, through, bowling. and we find our first syntax error. Bowling, All right. bowling. Bowling, bowling. Bowling, oh, and I did it in the one I copied and pasted. All right, let's stop that down so you don't have to listen to that over and over again. All right, if, right number, open, close, open. Why are you there? Open. Close. Sure, it would be the line that I copied and pasted over and over again that I have to edit. All right, let's run that. We could also just run our individual oh, oh. scene, but there you go. So there is our ball. If I press the left arrow, I get an error, non-existent function, apply impulse in base rigid body. I don't know why I'm getting that. Uh, one second. Okay, I'm a bit of an idiot. Uh, Apply impulse, apply in plus. So dyslexia came to my uh, my bane here. So impulse, like so. All right, so we're good to go there. Uh, let's check that guy out for playing. So stop, go ahead, play. Bowling. Title screen, left, right, left, 
don't go too far and then space and the cool thing is you can actually move it as you go and then you hear you in the collisions when they happen we are pretty much 99.9% .9 of the way there all we have left to do is actually be able to reset the field actually throw our after we throw our pin uh, that is pretty simple we're going to go ahead and add in a reset so we'll go back to our input map project settings input map reset add go on down add new keyboard for it key R, okay, close. And one last if, if event dot is action underscore released, reset, then we want to go ahead and, uh, what was my code? Uh, git tree dot reload current scene bit of a hack but basically what we do is uh, after we throw our ball and we want to reset things press R and we will reset our scene accordingly so go ahead and run that bowling left right space and then R and we're back to where we started with and that's it that is a very simple but complete bowling game from scratch in just over a half an hour with the Godot game engine obviously without explanation you could probably create this guy in about five or ten minutes um, so I hope you found that interesting and I found that useful. Again, there is a Unity version that does the exact same thing if you want to compare it, as well as a Play, um, a play, uh, play Canvas version. So if you want to compare the workflow between those three engines, uh, do check out those other two videos. I will link the uh, video for the, um, uh, the Unity version on that little window that pops up after this video. So click there if you're interested in more. If you enjoyed that, please, of course, do click that like button. And if you're interested in this kind of stuff, do hit that subscribe button. And again, if you want to help back and, you know, help me create this stuff, I do appreciate backing on Patreon. And as you see, there are some perks to it. I try not to make it too much because I, I want to, you know, make this useful to all of you. But it's slightly more useful to backers. Uh, so anyways, that's it for now. I hope you enjoyed that. That was a... Um, a bowling game implemented in the Godot game engine. And if there's other game engines you want us to get this treatment, do let me know. Obviously, they need to support uh, physics, uh, 3D model importing, obviously, 3D game engines. Um, but if they support all of those, I can obviously recreate this game in them as well, so you can compare the workflows again. So that's it for now. Hope you enjoyed all that. See you all later.